Hey there, peoples. <laughs> so, uh, I've got to figure out how to word this question. I could say, do you believe in aliens? And that would bring to mind perhaps little green men or an extraterrestrial from another planet. I could say, do you believe in UFOs? And that wouldn't really mean much because it's just an unidentified flying object. There's also the term UAV, which is unidentified aerial vehicle. But in order for it to be a vehicle, by definition, it has to transport individuals, correct? Therefore, a vehicle is for transporting at least something else. So, until we can be sure what is in a UFO, you know, we're stuck to say more of a question I would be posing here, which is, do you believe that there is an intelligence superior to ours, a conscious self-aware entity that exists or visits us on this planet or is from this planet? And this opens up a lot of questions and this is a fun topic. I haven't talked about it in a long time, but recently some new developments have caused me to want to uh, have a quick discussion about UFOs. Now I've always been fascinated. I've always been a believer that there is something greater. I used to watch the X-Files back in the 90s. I remember the I Want to Believe poster on Fox Mulder's wall and that pretty much resonates with exactly how I feel. I want to believe. But it doesn't mean I do. Now, initially, after hearing the reports of Roswell, the Phoenix Lights, all of the different reports, even back in the 50s when they were over Washington DC or the stories of them disabling nuclear warheads, there are a lot of UFO stories out there which are reported by legitimate channels, Navy, you know, various army sources. Um, the military has a long history of interaction with these entities, if you will. Now over the last several decades, people have been ridiculed and called tinfoil hat people for talking about aliens. And you really can't blame people for feeling that way, especially since the History Channel came out with Ancient Aliens. Now look, I loved that show when it first came out. I very much enjoyed watching it, but it didn't quite make sense, some of the parts when I started looking into them. I'm like, this is not a runway, that's a mesa, a mountaintop. There are so many stories in there that were just basically just com complete conjecture with absolutely no basis for reality. It was a show that was designed to just attract attention. And the thing is, at the time when it came out, the History Channel was still decent. I think that that show is still on. I think it's like season 15 or something crazy. I couldn't believe that I, when I found out it was still was on the air. But anyhow, it kind of made anybody who believes in UFOs or aliens look like a nutcase, as it always has been. Only about, you know, a few years back, the Navy released some of their footage of the, quote, Tic Tac UFO as well as another one, and there's been a lot of dispute whether they're legitimate, what the Navy's really seeing. The thing is, you have to remember that fighter pilots, people who have been training in the skies for years, they know whether they see a weather balloon, or whether they're seeing uh, an airplane, or, you know, <laughs> something that's a reflection. Um, and sometimes, some of this footage that's come out is pretty pretty convincing that there's something going on. Now, the Tic Tac UFO incident was, I believe, the USS Nimitz, which was a, I think it was an aircraft carrier out in the, at sea. I think it was in the Pacific, but uh, they caught this thing down by the water, above the water line, and there was something under the surface, as if it was maybe coming from it, communicating with it, we don't know. But then it zipped around the pilots like, like nobody's business and then took off. There's something interesting going on right now. It appears that the Pentagon is set to release, or should be releasing at least to Congress, um, what information they do have on observations on supposed UFOs. Now this is interesting, and this is, this is why I wanted to make this. Uh, apparently in the COVID relief bill, back in November or December, there was a little clause within that COVID relief bill that says that the, uh, I believe it was the uh, military or the Pentagon has 180 days to release information relating to UFOs, which was a very strange thing to put in a COVID relief bill. 
and I'm not sure of the intentions here. I, I also realize that, that this comes up in June, and this doesn't mean that it's going to declassify anything that's still classified, it just means that people will have more access to it. I believe that there is some sort of a disclosure going on, and it's going on slowly over a period of decades, but it's something that those of us who have looked into this have known, you know, from the beginning. These things, uh, there are some strange things in the skies. I guess I could tell you about my personal encounter, which was strange enough with my son. My wife had one as well, um, as she was driving home when she was a teenager. Uh, this one I had in the woods was, the only way I can explain it is a, a, a small light that was exploring in the sky like an ant. It would stop, go backwards, it would move to the side, it would swirl in a loop and kind of, it was the strangest experience and uh, I felt almost like it was aware of me. Now this brings me to the other side of UFOs, which a lot of people believe that they are entities, or some of them could just be balls of energy. We don't know. I don't know. And I think that talking about it just makes you sound crazy most of the time. But when you've had an experience or an encounter, it's really hard to discount it as nothing. And so, I'm not sure if anything's really going to be disclosed, but I'd like to back up for a minute to Roswell in 47, I believe it was July of 47 or June, when supposedly a UFO crashed in the desert, and this has been the Area 51 myth ever since then. Does it exist? Is it real? We don't know. And one of the interesting things is after this, you know, during the Cold War, we were afraid that Russia had things we didn't. In fact, when we go back to building the atomic bomb, um, most of the people who worked on the Manhattan Project were opposed to working on the Manhattan Project. They did not want to build a nuclear weapon. They weren't just dumb Americans or human beings saying, let's just build a bomb. No, they fought against it. The only way they were convinced to build the bomb was when they were told that Germany or Russia or somebody else was going to get it first because they were already working on it. Now, Russia had abandoned theirs like a couple of years before, yet the U.S. ended up creating and detonating two nuclear bombs. And it was interesting that right around that time, World War II is when Roswell happened and when UFO encounters increased. There are stories of UFOs hovering over nuclear facilities back in, I think it was the 60s or 70s, where they supposedly disabled a bunch of warheads. These things are very difficult to confirm, but it would show an intelligence that is aware that we can destroy ourselves, and showing that they are dominating in the skies. And according to the Navy, the military says in the Pentagon that these flying vehicles have become an issue for pilots, and this is why they're talking about it. The interesting thing here is that pilots have been seeing these things for, you know, ever since there have been pilots. They called them Foo Fighters back in World War II. But uh, they never got any serious recognition. And I believe it's because we didn't know what to make of it. And I heard one person state it the best. He said, it's like this. We get a vehicle in 1947. We might not understand what it's made of, how to get those alloys or metals, how it runs, how to operate it. And then they just basically warehouse it for a period of time put it in a hangar and wait until the technology catches up to where we can actually start using these things. And then they start using them and learning how to build their own, right? And so there's a very good possibility that many of the UFOs that are seen today are actually either U.S. or foreign created, you know, vehicles that we finally caught up to that technology of anti-gravity. You're not going to convince people of that without showing them how it works. But the thing is, black ops projects in the US are one thing. Imagine in China or Russia, unlimited funds to build whatever they want. And naturally, they would fly right over the US and spy on us. I mean, that's just what people do. It's this power dominance, which plays a huge role in perception, public perception of UFOs and aliens. A lot of the UFO reports, as well as, you know, these claims of technology that the government has, may have very well been disinformation campaigns or propaganda campaigns, campaigns to convince the public 
not just here but abroad that we have alien technology and these amazing space lasers so if you mess with us in America we're gonna whoop you it's not too far off of how American military operates you convince the enemy you have more firepower than you do therefore it puts a huge credibility gap in the stories that the military themselves are telling about these things if you know what I mean so it's a fascinating story um, all of the whole UFO history going back to ancient times uh, sure I have seen the claimed inscriptions of UFOs in the past some of them are very interesting some of the paintings from a thousand years ago it would appear that either a civilization from the past has remained hidden and comes out and explores or B there is some extraterrestrial civilization that lives either far away and has learned how to transport themselves here or lives nearby or has a base on the moon we just don't know it's really hard to get real information all we can go by is the stories that we hear from people and that leaves eyewitness testimony which is so often faulty and uh, it leaves a big question mark as to what's real and what's not and I don't know what to make of it so I think it would be fascinating if we were being visited by an intelligent species that could actually help us and I think that that's part of why people latch on to the idea of an alien species watching out for us or protecting us while others still think that they are here uh, for nefarious purposes to destroy us or you know create some reptilian race lizard people you know everybody has their own ideas on these things and the way I see it is nefarious intentions are, are uh, something that get people into trouble they get <laughs> cultures and races and you know even aliens would get themselves into trouble you if you're going to get to a level where you have that kind of technology you have to be able to at least somewhat trust one another and I you know it's interesting to see if the human race will ever make it to that point I feel like we're doing okay but I don't know how I feel about all of it it's all fascinating I don't have some desperate plea for aliens to take me away from the earth but I sure as hell would like to know what's out there just for the very interesting fact of knowing what's out there anyhow that's all I got for today thank you for listening let me know your comments about aliens and UFOs and if you've had an experience it's a fascinating topic and uh, one that I could definitely go into in more detail in the future so um, thank you to my patrons my new patron John and uh, I actually went through my patreon page today and I uploaded about 30 of my unlisted videos relating to particular topics that YouTube doesn't allow and I figured I'm just gonna start unlisting them and putting them on my patreon page so patrons can go there and check those out and uh, for everyone out there hope you have a wonderful day peace